By now, you should have found out what the patient wants to discuss and why they are upset. If we reflect on a time when any one of us has been angry, we all know that when experiencing a strong info emotion, our ability to take in and remember information is impaired. Therefore, it is essential to pair empathy to anger with an awareness of an impeded ability to take in information. Break down what you want to say into small chunks and ensure you are not coming across as patronizing in doing so. Reinforce every statement you make with a reassuring fact and uh, whoever you are talking to will feel far more satisfied with the conversation if you have a logical argument to why a person has found themselves in a situation. Any residual anger should dissipate. Below is an example of how this would play out. I understand the first concern you expressed was that your wife hadn't been seen by a doctor yet. Is that correct? Yeah, and I think it's a pretty shroud state of affairs, if I'm honest. I can appreciate your concern. Would you mind if I fill in on what has happened so far today? Be my guest. Thank you. So when your wife came to A&E, she received a full assessment from a triage nurse who took her brass and arranged for her to have x-rayed and other essential tests for us to optimize her care going forward. Right. I'm sure you can appreciate that here in A&E, we all work as a close unit. I can wholly understand that it is concerning that she hasn't physically seen a doctor yet. However, I can tell you that doctors in the department are aware of her and her clinical situation. Unfortunately, there are some people here who are more unwell than she is who have to take priority. This doesn't mean we are not concerned about your wife's welfare, nor are we unaware of her current situation. She is on close observations and we shall assess her as soon as we can. Yeah, I got that. I've seen some people here looking proper ill. It just that she's not well either you know, and it's really worrying me that she may not get better or that if she's not treated soon, something serious will happen to her. Of course, it worries you. Why don't we talk for a bit about your wife's current condition and the plan we have in place so far? That would be great. My understanding is your wife has come in with a chest infection. She is indeed poorly, but her observations indicate that she is doing well at present. We need her blood test results and a chest x-ray before we can really come up with a plan of how best to proceed. Once we have those, then we can do our best as a team to get your wife feeling better as soon as possible. If we acted without this, we may misdiagnose your wife and subsequently do her more harm than good. Well, I don't want that to happen. Nor do we. Unfortunately, these results can take a little while to come back. I will make sure we keep an eye out for them to get your wife treated as soon as possible. I'm sorry, but I have to get back to my other patients now. However, please don't think I'm forgetting about you or her. If you have any further concerns, please ask a nurse to find me and talk further. Before I go, is there anything I can get you? I have a little snack here. Do you need it? Oh, thank you, doctor. Just please tell me where I can get some water. If you walk out of the building and turn right about 50 meters, you will see a vending machine through which you can buy water. Before I go, is anything else I can help you with? Cheers, Dot. Sorry about before. Let's take a moment to dissect the above 
hypothetical situation. It is important in these instances not to re reflect too much on what has what was said, but instead the overall things of conversation. The opening sentence offers both empathy and uh, an indication that you are listening. The word understand allows you to express not only that you have been paying attention to their concerns, but also that you are reflecting upon it whilst your consultation is underway by ending it with, is this correct? It also makes you very personable to the person with whom you are talking by offering some weakness. Coinciding with this, it allows the patient or relative to offer you further concerns they would like to discuss. Using phrases such as, I can appreciate your concern, yet again put you on the same emotional plane as your consultee. Being able to show you can acknowledge somebody's strong emotion is a useful method of improving a negative situation by allowing them to explore it further. If you ask somebody for permission to explain a situation to them, it helps ensure you do not come across as arrogant or overbearing. Further improving rapport with the patient or carrier. Be honest and avoid the dragon. Let them know what you do and do not know, but more importantly, let them know why you and your team have acted in a certain way. As previously discussed, anger is usually a secondary emotion to fear or confusion. By explaining a process to someone, you can lay fear or confusion and uh, subsequently decrease the amount of anger they may be feeling. Over to go the extra mile, you could easily state that you will leave them to their day and go back to your business. However, if you offer that personal touch, such as stating a continuing active role in the health care of a patient, or show them where to eat, it proves that you care about the situation you are in and allows for a more positive experience for all concerns.